expectations from critics. So look who they face. They did not face the best teams in the league. That's exactly what happened. As <laughs>
That's all we need, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Anything past that, though, I don't know what's gonna happen. Knowing that with the right pieces, Steph, Clay, and Dre, so potential for one more. Unless Curry got there and averaged 40. And the team that outed them, the Los Angeles Lakers. At this point, I feel confident in saying they had a beautiful chance at a Cinderella run, if not for that LeBron injury so close to the playoffs. They made the miracle trade that we speculated was out there, AD actually stayed healthy, and it all culminated in a Western Conference Finals run, which was also pretty Lakers last year. Lakers made the craziest Hachimura, moves last year. Reeves, and adding Gabe Vincent, it's hard to call this anything other than a successful offseason. The formula works. It was proven last year. They now literally just have the same exact question they've had since they won the title in the bubble. Can, Can they stay healthy? Season together? Oh, By this yeah, point, same thing. We've all just accepted that LeBron Everybody is looking at AD. Be better than he's supposed to be at his age. And unlike the last few seasons, the roster now fits on opening night. The door is cracked ever so slightly for him to get a fifth ring, leading into his player option for the 25 season, where I assume we'll get some clarity about the next moves in his career. Luckily, man, the Lakers really a dark horse to win the ring, though. I ain't gonna lie. The way they came back last year with all them trades, all the pieces fit, and they got re signs. They got Gabe Vincent now, I think. I ain't gonna lie, they're gonna be tough, bro. He has already wrapped up AD through 2028, so they're they gonna be tough. The whole thing about his future being tied to what James does next summer. Other than that, the Lakers are I'm the last person who wants LeBron to get a ring right now, too, because Steph Curry on 4 2. I'm trying to see who get number five first. Season, making it the last possible time that the Battle of LA could have this level of intensity to it. Sure, they'll still be in Los Angeles, but them sharing the same building while contending in the playoffs remains to be one of the biggest events we've missed out on and may never get now. Personally, I'm just not waiting on it anymore. I've had it. I'm also no longer waiting on the Clippers to be healthy. Facts. Again, in the exact same Man, Russ was carrying them boys last year, but did y'all see the playoffs? Please go back and re me and watch my reactions, bro. Had it. I'm also no longer Russ out here dropping 40. Everybody thought he was washed. In the exact That's crazy. And then PG and Kawhi didn't even show up. Ago, it's crazy. They have a Literally did not show up. Aided by a better fitting Russell Westbrook who impressed at season's end. And once again, we were teased when two games of Kawhi Leonard looked like it would be enough to overpower the Suns for a whole series. Facts. This all leaves us with a scenario I started. Kawhi just a teaser, bro. He don't even want to play basketball for real. Contracts. It appears that we've made it through this summer without them even trying. Is he even a real person? And so they're going for it. Is Kawhi is Kawhi living a real person, bro? While I don't think either somebody answer that for me. Down nearly fifty million dollars for the twenty twenty five season. It doesn't change the fact that the Clippers basically have a little over a year to make something of that blockbuster trade from the end of last decade. Just like the Lakers, I'm sure if they could put a season together, they'd be there competing at the end. Yet that just hasn't even been close to the case since twenty twenty. Due to that fact. Rather than blow it up, they seem to be hot on the trail of a deal that would have landed James Harden as the starting point guard. What the Clippers would have traded to make this happen, I do not know. How many games they would have even played together, I also do not know. You don't have to get rid of PG or something because you can't keep the big three. You can't have a big three of James, PG, and Kawhi unless you're ready to spin. Shit show between Harden and that front office. At the time of this writing, he maintains that he will never be involved with the franchise featuring Daryl Morey again. Meanwhile, he barely has these. Oh my goodness! Regarding a trade. He's already accepted his player option for 2024 because he really didn't have anywhere else to go as a free agent. When he wasn't traded as agreed to, and he went this whole season without getting his max extension that they'd shaken on, well, that's how we get this stalemate. Problem is, his only leverage at all is Jordan. Lefty. He's pushing 30 and he's locked up at least until 2026. Sure, if James really pushed the issue and didn't play, it would almost certainly cost Philly another year of Embiid's career, and he's already made it clear he intends to win a title wherever that may be. Still, after that, there's very little he can do. He won't be able to play professionally anywhere else in the world. He's pushing mid-30s. He's not the same player he was. I disagree. It's going to be one team that can pick him up. Probably the Jazz or something. It'd be one thing if he were a prime superstar that could instantly change the outlook of a franchise. In my opinion, he's just right over that hill. I don't know what he intends to do outside of the fat suit play from here. Nobody really need him though. It's crazy. Intends to do, as they still haven't been to a conference finals and they're about to have two unhappy star players. Philly don't really need him because they're not winning a ring, bro. Anybody that they are not winning I'm sorry, Joel Embiid is not that guy. Or not. So he got his little MVP though. To be wasted one way or the other, and they're losing him whether it's now or next year. In short, yeah, this is a waste of a season for the so for Philly. I know Philly fans upset. Well, 
Y'all was going through the, through the pro process. Y'all thought it was done. Y'all still going through it. As much as I hate to say it, all the potential in the world, then they just don't have their guys on the floor. Ingram nor Zion have managed to play more than 55 games individually in the last two seasons. Had they been healthy, I think they were worth a top four seed in 2023. The good news is they're both relatively young and Zion is good to go through 2028. Despite all this happened, if they just got a good stroke of luck and were able to build from this season on, they've got a large window. However, that's why I call them the Young Clippers. We just don't know from season to season what the lineup on the floor is going to be. You really can't trust the Pelicans them. just there, bro. Like, if it was healthy, they'll be a top team, but fans, but they're not. So. Giannis is talking about his contract already. I know it seems just like yesterday his gamble to sign the initial extension had paid off, but the Bucks have had zero luck since then. Middleton Giannis come to the Warriors. And I'm beginning to question you will never lose again. I promise. Meanwhile, freak accidents just hunt this team. The only difference is they Damn. survived that one incident back in 2021 and they were they came back and won a ring. That's crazy. Said, Brooke Lopez is 35, Holiday 33, Middleton 32. That's their whole core approaching its mid 30s and the team really hasn't changed in a few years. The summer is no exception as they really haven't added a game changer. There's only the hope that Marjan Bochamp becomes a thing. So if they don't make a run with this aging roster this season, that leaves Giannis with 2025 as his. But his head is a whole nother foot over Yerk over Nurkic. That leaves Giannis with 2025 as his only guaranteed year left in ink. He said a while ago, you never know what'll happen in the future, and he's reiterated he's only committed to a winning and growing direction recently. Long story short, the Bucks either need to win this coming June or add something convincing right afterward. If neither of those keys turn true, we are headed back into some nasty photoshopping. The Suns are still the third the the Warriors. will be their third year since their loss to the Bucks. In a major surprise, they were the team that was able to successfully... Now Curry and Giannis the duo is the greatest duo of all time, hands down. And so, with Chris Paul gone, their starting point guard appears to be some mixture between Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. And another surprise, they did not move DeAndre Ayton. So they're making the bet that this core four can take them to the promised land. Good luck. have to pay off at some point in the near future, given that Durant is 34 years old and has not... Oh my goodness, KD. The season in quite some time. I'd say they That's how you know you can know. Acquiring nice support pieces such as Eric Gordon and Yuta Watanabe. It's definitely a win today, then worry about tomorrow roster. The core is locked up for a reasonable amount of time, so now it just Bro, as long as you got Booker there, bro. Well this they don't have to worry about nothing. About they the just need to try to contend right now. Exactly what they had to do by extending Jalen Brown through I thought Jalen Brown was going to be gone this offseason. I ain't going to lie. Going to he still can get traded, though. basic struggles he has as a star on a contending team, but they could not just let him eventually walk for free nor was there a significant trade out there to be made not a realistic one who would they try to get they need to get dane bro not have to trade marcus smart he was also the only piece that they could trade to get some type of game changing value back it's a massive gamble because he's been known as the heart and soul of this squad but there's no doubt that what porzingis brings fits nicely into some of what these celtics need to clear the mountaintop of course, as always with Boston's recent luck, he's already struggling this summer with plantar fasciitis, which is a terrifying factor for a seven foot big man. I'm personally waiting for them to spoil my mood by saying he needs time to rehab during the season. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. In any case, nah, we're trying to see Przingis play for the Celtics, bro. All fair criticism. No injuries. Aside, Jason and Jalen have had. Is he gonna talk about uh together. Jordan so Poole? They've wagered they to the Wizards when the average thirty. Although Probably I lead the league I'm in scoring. About how the supporting cast looks in a couple more years when both of their payrolls are in the stratosphere. Marcus Smart was sent to the Memphis Grizzlies of all places, who are in a less than stellar situation. Just a year ago, they'd made massive strides in a short amount of time that had us questioning if they were already contenders. That was probably Ducker. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. To be far off, so long as they could stay healthy. Oh my goodness, Jerry, get that out of here. That's when the jaw saga started, where he just could not refrain from doing obvious brand risk activity off the court, eventually leading to his massive suspension to start. Look, he should have been more. He did more than 25 games, but I ain't tripping. Consistent ability to win. But I am trying to see him play at the same time. Jones, who played a big he was going crazy though. Acting like a hula again. Survive this next run without him, but especially after a disappointing first round exit, it's fair to question what type of momentum they'll have as things kick off this year. On that note, as many jokes as Dylan Brooks brought on himself, he, he said Dylan Brooks. This year. On that's crazy. Note, as many jokes as Dylan Brooks brought on himself, he was a very solid defender for them that practically got exiled. Smart should be able to replace that, but the vibes are less than immaculate, especially considering Brandon Clark will also be out for the beginning. 
they'll basically need to see how much better Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson can get in this time to get what their chances are when Jaw returns. It's actually a good chance for the Grizzlies if you think about it, because if now they can evaluate if Bain can handle being a number one scoring option while while uh Jaw he need to average at least twenty five points going into the season. And then Jaron Jackson, he need to take a big leap this season offensively. And he already like one of the best defenders, probably like top three in the league. He's one DPOY. He probably need to take another defensive leap um next season too. And if they can become a top duo without Ja, you and Ja. And That's a, almost a championship right there. Age, they've got a really long time to figure this all out. Or well, at least you got the whole court right there. Being young, the Cleveland Cavaliers showed their Oh my goodness, the Cavs are so confusing, bro. They got such young, a though. good four. But they got Darius Garland, a 20 uh potential 25 and 10 assists per game point guard. And he shoot 40% for three. You got he can shoot 40% for three. You got Donovan Mitchell. You don't need to explain nothing about him. You got Evan Mobley. He coming up. He still got so much room to grow. You got Jaron Allen still. I ain't going to lie. I'll probably try to trade him for like another wing or something because I don't think you need Jaron Allen and Evan Mobley down there. Kind of look, kind of look like bunched up down there together. And now I'm just wondering they got a good quarter. Mobley will have a deeper bag by the time the postseason returns. It'd be in Cleveland's best interest that he does because quiet is kept. Donovan Mitchell is already on the clock once again. The 2025 Facts. season is all that he's got guaranteed after this, and there's been no promises made about an extension from his side. So I don't see why he will lead up. Hey, my goodness, goodness bro. He's just like 6'2 so dunking like this. This is crazy. Donovan, Donovan is an underrated dunker in this league. You see how he just snatched that back? So just like that is crazy, bro. Ever, if the year before his contract year is a letdown, he's got leverage with what happens next and could eventually find himself exactly where he wants to be, wherever that is. Although there appeared to be impending doom in Dallas towards the end of the season, they were able to retain Kyrie Irving so that he'll hopefully get a full year of basketball with Luka Doncic. That was the only go for it move available to give them a shot. Mm, I think I see what the Dallas Mavericks are doing. I think they're trying to get a full year with Kyrie to see what he can do so you can up his trade value and then get Lucas some help. Because I don't see how Luka and Kyrie will be able to win a ring together. Two guards, two ball-dominant guards. Kyrie can probably, he can play off the ball, but it's not going to be enough, though. probably still a piece or two away from being able to make an extended run. And as far as teams that I directly want to speak about in this video, Sacramento will round off that list because I'm still very curious about them. Last season was full of energy with their resurgence and re-entry into the playoffs, as Kings fans rightfully and predictably beat their chest about a trade they were heavily clowned for. With that being said, the honeymoon is now over. So Let's be real, bro. Next... Nobody cares about the Kings, bro. Steps here. That's all I'm gonna leave that at. Nobody at looking at them like that for real. They're a good team, but like they're not winning no championship anytime soon. They're super fun. They're a good team, but do oh my goodness, the Aaron Fox, what are you doing right now? Why did you, why did you just dunk him like that? That is crazy. He just hanging. Last year, when it was pointed out that veteran and contending teams won to play them in the first round since they had a high seed, and then that turned out being a fifty piece in game seven. Their offseason was not that impressive, and they clearly need more before they're taken seriously in the West. So the good feelings were warranted, but they the logo. didn't trade a young Halliburton for this. That means the hope is that it eventually surmounts to more than just some first and second round exits. That's I wonder what they would be doing with Halliburton right now. Year, or at least they'll be trying to. Beyond that, the league stands in a really good place going into the 2024 NBA season, as there's just so much to follow. The careers of Scoot and Wimbenyama kick off to a start that should be even more anticipated after the events of Summer League. There's plenty of young talent to keep track of in Orlando, Houston, you look in Detroit and Kate Cunningham is coming back. OKC is probably playoff worthy this year as they get to throw Chet Holmgren's rookie season. Low key. With the they probably are playoff worthy. Anthony Low key. Edwards will continue to block. Oh yeah, Ant-Man. Ant-Man going to average 30 this year. No overwhelming super team in he should, league. at least 28. In in a row. I've got to say the 2020s have been beautiful so far in the NBA. Minus Facts. That one year, but if we're mentioning yeah, super that one year at the end, I guess the Suns fit the definition technically. Yet when they're you super team, what they have to prove in terms of fit and staying healthy for an entire season, they aren't even the favorites right out of the gate. To still me, a super team. Is still intact. Of 
course, these are all things we will have to wait and see. And as September rolls in, getting us one month you got three thirty point per game scores. Let me know what you're looking forward to in the twenty twenty four season. Maybe give your contenders and who's the favorite going into it, given that the parity is where it is. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, sub, and hit the bell next to my name. I love you, video. Every time a new video drops. Appreciate you watching, and I'll. I'm not gonna lie, a W video though. First thing I'm looking forward to. Jordan Poole 40 ball, Jordan Poole 50 ball, Jordan Poole 60 ball. He don't get all of those marks in probably like the first two months. He probably going to lead the league in scoring, let's be honest. Warriors, probably going to be the number one seed. They got their perfect backup point guard right now. They had the best starting lineup in the season last year. They starting lineup didn't change. Jonathan Kuminga finna go crazy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The whole league finna go crazy, really. I'm trying to see what Giannis talking about. Giannis trying to get some revenge for next season. Because he ain't got an MVP in two years. Now he probably should have like three or four right now. A W video though. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next.